23 miles north of Seward, on the shores of Lake Kenai, one of Alaska's largest and most beautiful lakes, is an Alaskan roadhouse, a haven for weary travelers. There are hundreds of roadhouses in Alaska, but this one is unusual because of the courageous widow who owns it, Mrs. Nellie Loying, better known as Alaska Nellie. During her 30 years in Alaska, she has cooked, washed, mended, trapped, prospected for gold, driven a dog team mail route, twice acted as postmistress for Uncle Sam, and has been twice sheriff of Kern Creek. Over 15,000 people have written their names on her roadhouse register. Among the visitors, there have been two presidents of the United States, many people of foreign nobility, senators and congressmen, and world travelers, including your narrator. The first question that most visitors usually ask of Alaska Nellie is, what was your most thrilling experience? And she invariably answers by showing three crippled fingers that date back to the day a giant brown bear chased her into a barn. According to Nellie's story, while closing the door behind her, the bear clawed at her fingers. Later, Nellie shot the bear, and this skin is all that's left of him. Through long years and at thousands of dollars of expense, Nellie has gathered together one or more specimens of each animal that has its habitat in Alaska. Her collection of animal heads is becoming famous, and with each head goes the story of how the animal was caught. This particular story, however, is interrupted by the tingle of a little bell in Nellie's kitchen. She informs us that this is her fish bell. And now comes Nellie's famous fishing act, which afforded amusement to the late President Warren G. Harding during his visit here. Ah, we may be greenhorns from the city, Nellie, but we do know the difference between a live fish and a stuffed one. Anyway, the idea is all right, and we know the live fish aren't biting today so we'll forgive you this time. Nevertheless, Nellie insists that the bell idea has been a great success, and in the right season, she has pulled in through her window as many as 50 fish in a day. Aside from hunting and fishing, Alaska Nellie, with all her outward masculinity, has the heart of a true-born woman, as illustrated by her genuine love for flowers, which she cultivates in her own greenhouses. Although Nellie is in her middle 60s, she can still saw a cord of wood as quickly as the best woodman in Alaska. With much reluctance, Nellie occasionally dons a dress and steps out of her frontier woman characterization. Her best friend, she says, is her dog, and of him she has this to say. The Malamute is the king of the trail. He has struggled through with freight and mail. He eats what you offer. He sleeps in the snow and he stays on the trail when it's 40 below. Of all the multifarious duties performed by Alaska Nellie, none is more significant than that of raising the flag of her adapted land, a flag that was designed by a Seward schoolboy in 1926. And now as we say farewell to Alaska Nellie, we join with her in saluting this flag, which is in reality a territorial edition of the Stars and Stripes, flying over that portion of our country which was acquired without dispute or bloodshed and is fast becoming one of our most valuable possessions.